This is not a fancy social protocol at all. This is what we do like 99.9999% of the time in regular society. If think of a smart contract as an analogy to a legal contract, if, if I were to be, say, like renting an apartment with some landlord, the way that social interaction would go is, is I would go probably to the apartment, I'd sit down with the landlord and, you know, she'd bring up his paper, I'd have a copy of that, I'd sign it, she'd sign it, and we'd both be happy. I'd put it in my drawer, she'd put it in, in her files, whatever, and I'd live there and then I'd move out. At no point did I go to a judge and say, like, you know, hey, this is proof that we signed this contract and I'm now legally allowed to live here. Like, that doesn't happen, right? We just, we just agree. And we know that if I were to trash the place or something like that, that I would, well, I wouldn't, but she would go to the, the courthouse and she'd say, hey, Liam trashed the place and, like, here's the proof and, like, I don't know, like, put him in prison or something, whatever it is that you do that people to trash places. Um, uh, another example, like, if, if you're employing a person, right, and you don't pay the person, it's not like you go to the, like the, you go to like the government to, to prove that you know, you're going to pay the person. You just, you just pay the person, and if, and if they ever like, you know, don't get paid, they go to the court, and then you deal with it later on. Um, we don't go to the court for every interaction is the key point. So to me, this is like an obvious extension of the blockchain protocol, where the blockchain is this impartial judge, this impartial adjudication system, effectively, um, or judiciary system, that we can rely on. And it's pretty good, it's pretty decentralized, pretty secure. It just, it's just super slow. The same way the court systems are slow, like, I don't want to go to the court, it's an annoying process. But, but if I'm honest and I'm just a good actor, then I'll just use this protocol, never go to the court system, but I have the guarantee that I, I could if I had to, but I don't actually really ever have to. So, you know, in our vision of the future, uh, and this is uh, number two of the, the kind of ways that you can extend it, the next state channel networks is important. In our version of the future, people don't just have accounts on Ethereum or on a blockchain. They have accounts within the state channel network. They might have several different nodes, different, or different, uh, I, guess, I guess nodes in the graph with edges with different people, but the point is they're in that graph. And there will exist several paths for them to take to get to anyone else in the graph. And as long as that path exists, they don't need to use the blockchain at all. And you know, the question I always get asked is like, well, doesn't it mean that I have to like take the money out and put it back in the blockchain after I'm done? Well, the goal of this is to work towards a future where you rarely ever have to take the money out of that graph, out of the network. It's more likely than not that the thing you want to do is with someone in that network than it is the not. Right? Another analogy, like, I, 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 like I'm not going to make a wire transfer if I'm going to send money like, to Panache. I'm, I'm going to like use Venmo or, or maybe I'll do Interact eTrans. I'm going to use some other, other system that's on top of like, some financial system. I'm not going to myself go right down to the bleeding edge. I'm not going like, to give them a bar of gold. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use one of the other systems. And this is just a clear example of the first basic use cases of one of these systems.